Hi, this is unitylessons.com and today I will show you this simple fence building mechanic. You can start building a fence and it will snap to integer positions. After one meter it will create a pole and you can uh, continue building your fence starting at any of these poles to create whatever map you'd like. Now let's start off with a new scene and create the surface that we will create our fences on. So I'll just create a plane, reset its position and make it slightly bigger. Uh, next, create two cubes. The first one will become my pole prefab and the second one will become my fence prefab. Now for the measures of these two objects we will choose the poles to be 0.1 in x direction and z direction and we will choose the uh, fence part to be 0.9 of length. Now the reason for choosing these measures is that we can choose integer positions for the poles and the fence part will fill all the space in between. Now let's go ahead and apply these measures to our prefabs. And I will choose 0.6 as the height for a pole and 0.5 as the height for a fence part because then the poles will stick out just slightly. Also create some materials like one green one and one red one. Quickly assign these colors to those materials so we can distinguish between our fence and our poles and maybe the floor. So let me assign the green to the floor and the red to the fence. We will leave the poles white and now we can save our fence and our pole as prefab and delete these two objects from the scene. Next, let's create a visual representation for our mouse pointer so that we can tell where we will start building our fence or where we will continue building our fence. Uh, so the first thing I will do is to choose an appropriate position for my camera uh, in the scene view, something from above, and then press Command, Shift and F, that is a uh, game object aligned with view. Then we will add some object that will represent our mouse pointer. I'll just choose a sphere and maybe make it red so we can see it. Next, we can add a script to the main camera and call it something like show mouse position. In this script, we will define two crucial methods for our fence building mechanism. The first method will allow us to determine the uh, real world position that the user is pointing at with his mouse. So uh, we will call it get world point. And to do it, we need a handle on the camera. So let's get the component from the object first. Next, we will perform a ray cast and we will use the method uh, screen point to ray and feed it our mouse position. We also need a ray cast hit to uh, obtain information about where uh, the ray cast actually hit. And now we can perform the ray cast. So we will do a physics dot ray cast. And then we will feed it our ray and our hit variable for feedback and we will simply return that point where it hit. Now Unity uh, won't be happy here because only this path returns a value. So we will need to return uh, vector 3.0, just in case uh, this doesn't work, which it will always do, but um, C Sharp gives you an error if you don't return a value in all possible paths. So. The next method is to snap this world position. So I'll call the method uh, snap position and we will feed it a vector three. Let's call this one original. And let me create a vector three variable called snapped. 
and then we will just say snap dot x equals math f dot floor original dot x plus 3.5. So what this will do is it takes the x value and this is uh, simply snapping at whole point positions here. We will do this for the y and z variable as well. So let's put these here and adjust it here. And then simply return the snap position. Next, we will add a reference for our mouse pointer. So we will say public game object mouse pointer. Now, as we do this, the variable shows up in our inspector and we can assign the sphere, which maybe we should rename to mouse pointer uh, to the script. Now all that's left to do is to adjust the mouse pointer's uh, position in the update function and let's set it to snap position get will point. Actually, we should scale our mouse pointer down a little to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Also, I scaled down my plane again because it was too big. Um, let's adjust the camera position as well. And then you can see that uh, the thing we just programmed uh, snaps the mouse pointer position to integer positions. We do not have smooth transitions, but it snaps in steps of one. We could now use this to set it as starting point for our fence. All right, so let's go ahead and add a script to the main camera and let's call it create fence. In this script, we need a Boolean variable to keep track of whether we're currently creating a fence or not. Then in the update function, we can take care of getting the input from the user. So let me just create uh, a method for that. Um, and to handle the mouse input, we're going to do input.get mouse button down and zero is the left click. So we will use that. And in this case, we will want to start building a fence. There's another case that we need to handle. Uh, if we get mouse button up instead. So if we let go of the mouse. So in this case, we want to set fence, which kind of means let's stop creating the fence. And then there's the else case. And in that case, we check first if we're currently creating a fence. And if so, we want to update our fence. Okay, so that's the structure of the get input method. Uh, you can see that there are three methods that we haven't created yet. So let's create all of them. Okay, so definitely we will want to set the creating Boolean variable to true if we start creating a fence and we will want to set it to false uh, when we're done building the fence. Of course, we will want to reuse our get world point and snap position methods. So to avoid rewriting that code, we will uh, add a handle to this mouse position script. Uh, let's just call it pointer and adjust its value in the start function. So let's say pointer get component show mouse position. Consequently, we can determine the start position when we start building our fence. So let's say get world point. We should also snap it. So Let's do it like this. Next, we want to instantiate the first starting pole. So to have access to the prefabs, we should introduce public variables of type game object and let's say pole prefab and do the same thing for uh, our fence prefab. As we make the variables public, they appear in the inspector and we can assign 
the appropriate objects to the slots. Next, we create a game object start poll and instantiate um, our poll prefab at the start position. We use quaternion.identity as rotation, which means no rotation whatsoever. Lastly, we need to remember the poll we just created, so I need another variable uh, and call it last poll. And we'll just save our start poll into the last poll. Now in the update function, we will get the position that the mouse is currently pointing at by uh, saying vector three uh, current equals pointer get world point again. And then of course we snap it again. So we say pointer dot snap position and we feed it our current position. And now we will create a new fence segment if the positions differ. So if we have actually moved to somewhere else. So we can effectively compare our current position um, with our last pulse position. Notice that I've typed an exclamation mark here to invert the condition. So actually, if they are not equal, we will enter this if condition. Now, before continuing, we should actually move up our start pole by 0 0.3. We just add this line here. Uh, we leave the X and the Z position as it is, and we just add 0 0.3 to the Y position and restore it into the start pole transforms position. Uh, we should do the same thing with our current pull. After snapping its position, we should move it up a little. Then we can call our create fence segment method, pass the current position. Of course, this is a new method that we need to create. So let's say create fence segment and accept a variable of type vector three, let's call it current again. Now the new fence segment consists of a new pole and of the fence segment in between the new pole and the last pole. So let's first create that new pole. Uh, for this, we will instantiate a pole prefab at the current position with no rotation. Next, we will calculate the point in between the two poles. So for this, we can use uh, the build in Unity function vector 3lerp You might know lerp from a context where you want to smoothly transition an object uh, from one point to another. But what the lerp method originally does is just to calculate a point in between two points, which is then used to smoothly transition objects we can just use it to calculate the middle between our new pole and our last pole. If we say 0 0.5, we just go halfway there and uh, consequently get the point right in between. Now that we have the middle point, we can um, create a new fence for this, we instantiate a fans prefab at the middle position. Uh, we give it zero rotation at first, and then simply use the built-in look at function to look at uh, the last pole. So last pole dot transform. Lastly, we need to update our last poll to be our new poll. So next time we enter this function, we have uh, the new poll we just created as last poll. Now we can already kind of create fences, but if we uh, go back in the same direction, it gets a bit buggy. So, uh, we kind of stack fences on top of each other. We don't want that, so uh, 
we should set our fence and our pole to ignore raycast. Consequently, the uh, raycast to determine the weld point will not hit our structure and we can create them much better. If you've made it this far, I would like to congratulate you on your attention span. If you liked what you saw, make sure to subscribe to my channel and visit my website unitylessons.com to check out all the other free tutorials which are collected here. I've also created a Oculus Rift course that integrates uh, Unity 3D with the Oculus Rift. So if you're interested in that, make sure to get it. You will find a link for that in the video description.